All right, everybody's favorite topic. Don't those donuts look good? I think they look good. <laughs> And, and, and part of the challenge is that I was putting this all together and doing the research to write all this and looking at my diet and going, oh man, this is not good. But it's tasty. Alright, so carbohydrates. We're going to take a look. What are they? What do they do? And what are some healthy options? Because we don't want to eliminate. We don't want to just say, no, this food group is gone. Okay? That is not a good strategy. So, change of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Again, something your body can break up. Your body's really, really good at making carbohydrates. Why? Because carbohydrates is one of the only things, sugar, that can actually feed your brain. It will break down everything. It'll break down your fat. It'll break down your protein. It'll break down your bone. It'll break down everything it has in order to make sugar. Okay, if it needs to. Okay? We hear about simple versus complex carbohydrates. On the far right, that's a complex carbohydrate. The far left, that's a simple carbohydrate. Okay? In order to get into your body, to make it from your stomach into your system, that one on the right has to be broken down and look like the one on the left. All right? So this is one of the reasons why complex carbohydrates are a lot slower digesting. They sit with you longer. They decrease the impact on your blood sugar. Your body's got to do all that work. So what do they do in the body? First step, they go to the liver. The liver is our big carbohydrate storage. Okay? It stores glycogen. Okay, when you sleep at night, you eat, you know, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, whenever you go to bed, whenever your last meal is, and then you don't eat again until 6, 7, 8, 9, you know, sometimes 8, 10, 12, 14 hours. Well, your brain needs sugar throughout the night to keep you alive. That's what the liver is doing. It's sitting there putting sugar into the blood, keeping your blood sugar nice and, nice and even. Blood sugar is pretty tightly controlled in your body. Too high causes a lot of problems. High blood sugar, the analogy that I use, high blood sugar is like razor blades it's going to shred your very fine vessels. And the place that attacks us first are your eyes, you get retinopathy, because the blood vessels are very small. Your kidneys, you get what's uh, called uh, nephropathy, okay, because that's your filtering system. And then in your peripheral, in your nerves, you get neuropathy, because blood sugar damages those vessels very, very quickly, okay? Once the liver is all filled up, then it starts to release the extra into the blood sugar, into the bloodstream, and that's when blood sugar goes up. And that's when our body releases insulin, okay? Insulin's our storage hormone. It's what opens the door and allows everything to happen, okay? Made in your pancreas. And you can see here, we got our cell. Our nice little insulin receptor comes in, collects on, and then all of a sudden it opens up our glucose channel. It recruits all the transporters to that cell membrane, opens up the channel, and allows the sugar to come in. Because your body wants to keep blood sugar low. It's our storage hormone. Insulin also works to help put protein into the muscles. It also works to help put fat into the fat. And at certain times, and we'll talk about this with regard to our workout nutrition, insulin, we want to actually manipulate our insulin levels. We actually want to put them high at some points. So very, very briefly. We can do that through our nutrition. So, what's the difference in terms of type one, type two diabetes? I'm sure you've heard this first. So type one diabetes is what's called insulin dependent diabetes. Your body, your pancreas, for whatever reason, has lost the ability to make insulin or it just simply doesn't make enough. And a lot of times it's something that you're born with or it's a result of genetics, okay? And these are people who require insulin injections because the body just doesn't make it, okay? The other one, the most prevalent kind, is called non-insulin dependent diabetes. And what's happened is your cells have become resistant to insulin. So it's like, imagine insulin is like yelling at the cell saying, Open up the door. Well, what happens is when you eat chronically high sugar, your blood sugar is very, very high on a regular basis. And so your body has to release a whole bunch of insulin. So there's lots of insulin banging at the door, banging at the door, banging at the door. Eventually, your cells begin to get fatigued listening to it. And so what happens? The pancreas screams louder. And it produces more insulin. And so the cells become more resistant. And it becomes a vicious cycle. Okay? The next thing that they do is, there's a couple of drugs out on the market. There's a drug called metformin. Metformin is super common. What metformin does is it helps get sugar into the cells through a non-insulin dependent pathway. But it can only do so much. So then you get these things called sulfonylureas and uh, things like actose and avandia. What that does is that yells at your pancreas. It tells your pancreas, come on, produce more insulin, more insulin. It becomes a vicious cycle. Eventually your pancreas gets fatigued. And then what happens is you end up going on insulin injections. And then you end up doing 10, 20, 30, because it just, the cells are getting fatigued. And this is very, very heavily related to diet and nutrition. 
okay? If you're eating a lot of sugar, you're eating a lot of processed foods, which spike your blood sugar really quick, your body releases insulin, and this is how you develop diabetes over time, or non-insulin dependent diabetes, which will eventually progress into insulin dependent diabetes. So we talked about the complex versus simple carbohydrates. If you look at the red graph, that's the rate of change of blood sugar when you eat a simple carbohydrate, something that's got that little ring structure, sugar, okay? And the amplitude of that peak is gonna correspond to the amount of insulin that's released. The blood, same amount of carbohydrates, but in complex form. Why? They're getting into your blood a little bit slower because your body's gotta break them down over time. But you see, with the high spike, you get a big dip afterwards, you get an overshoot because your body gets this massive influx of sugar, so it releases this massive pulse of insulin. Well, what happens is it drives your blood sugar too low. And so now you get hungry, now you're starving again. Again, eating processed food, this is why you're constantly hungry when you eat heavily processed food, okay? This looks at the response rate, and it talks about something called the glycemic index. So one thing you look at is a sugar content, but then you look at the glycemic index, and the glycemic index is the rate at which it enters into your body. Okay. Sugar, white bread, has a glycemic index of 100. It's the standard. It's what everything else is measured against. Okay. Something like an egg, a hard-boiled egg, has a glycemic index of like 23. It's very, very low. It slowly releases into your body in terms of the rate at which it affects your blood sugar. So we talk about glycemic index and glycemic load. High sugar, it's a big load, massive insulin response. And we want to look for things that are going to lower that. Now, eating something like a carbohydrate along with a fat in the stomach will slow the rate at which it enters into your body. This is why eating multiple types of food together in your meals is usually a good idea as opposed to just protein or just fat or just sugar. Again, variety, eating healthy food meals. Okay. So what do we do about carbs? Well, what does the research say about carbs? Are they good for you? Well, some research said yes, some research says no, some research says sometimes, some says always, some says never. What the heck do we do? That's the great thing about research. If you find a paper you don't like, just keep looking, you'll find one that says the exact opposite. That's awesome. All right, so what do these things actually do in our body? They're fuel for exercise. So during exercise, they're actually great. There's a lot of evidence showing that if you consume protein and sugar during exercise, it has a meaningful impact on your exercise duration, your exercise intensity. So used in the right circumstances, very, very effective. We like to say a minimum intake of 130 grams a day. Okay, this is why we're not big fans on eliminating carbohydrates. You get them too low, you're gonna cause a lot of problems. But we want low glycemic carbs during the day to slowly keep our blood sugar full. And high glycemic during exercise. Why? Because high glycemic, they show up in our blood real quick and they're available to our muscles to use as energy right away. So you're not gonna have the insulin response. Why? Because your muscles are burning. Your muscles, when they're exercising, create what's called an energy sink. They want to actually suck in energy, okay? So giving them the things they need can really help your performance during exercise. All right, so is lower better? Well, over-restriction of carbs, carbohydrates can lead to a whole bunch of things. Decreased production of T3, that's your thyroid hormone, okay? That's the metabolic form of, high, uh, of thyroid. Your thyroid actually produces what's called T4, then it goes through a chemical reaction, becomes T3, and that's what actually controls a lot of the metabolic rates in your cells. You increase cortisol when you get too low. Again, stress hormone, decreased testosterone. Men and women, you both produce testosterone. Testosterone is one of our exit hormones. Okay, it's what helps get fat cells out and available for burning. Your muscles break down without enough carbohydrates. You suppress your immune function. And you really begin to impair your mood and your cognitive function. Again, I reckon back to when I was dieting for bodybuilding. I was not a pleasant person to be around. I was an asshole. Why? Because of what I was doing to myself. It is brutal, okay? Over-restriction does nothing positive for you. What we want to do is we want to learn how to eat them and when to eat them. So what are low glycemic carbs? Whole grain's a big one. They're high in fiber, they're slow to digest, they got lots of vitamins, and they're satiating, okay? Yes, they take a little bit longer to cook, okay? Put them on the stove with a little bit of water, let them simmer, just like cooking rice. Rice cookers are great. They can make all the stuff, and they actually store quite well, three, four days in the fridge. Scoop it out, throw it in the microwave, heat it up, and away you go. Okay, you see plain, 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 plain. Not processed. That's the key. Because processing, what processing of food does is it's mechanical 
digestion, breakdown, making those things more available to you. The more work that's already been done for your body, the faster it's going to get into your blood system. The higher glycemic and the bigger insulin response. So you can take something that's quite healthy for you, process the crap out of it, and each time you remove the nutrients and you make it that much easier to get into your body. Okay? Whole grain's a big buzzword. Who wants some whole grain grease puffs? <laughs> if they say whole grain, they must be healthy, right? This is part of the manufacturing thing you gotta be careful of. All you have to do is sprinkle less than 1% of the product can be whole grain, you can put that label on. Why? Because food manufacturers are very, very powerful lobby groups. Why? Because there's a lot of money in there. Everybody's gotta eat. Alright? So be careful. Look at the ingredients. You know, this is one of the things that we can help you with. If you wanna have a question, shoot us a food label. We'll help you interpret. It, okay? It's a very confusing thing out there. You're fighting, you're fighting a battle against a lot of really smart people who are trying to make a lot of money. Alright?